Hey! This is Reverend Wayne S. Pierce right here for the Views Express Live right here on the Free America Radio Network. How are you today for the 24th of September? Yes, it is one of those days. You ever Have you ever woke up and, and looked at the calendar and thought it was like the day later? You wake up on a Saturday and you're like, I got to go to work today. And then, and then you think, wait a minute, no, I don't, it's Saturday. Why do we do that? <laughs> Never could understand that. Why do we do that? <laughs> it's kind of a weird little thing that we do. And uh, it, it's... <laughs> It's really, 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 it's really weird. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> I, um, <clears throat> I got up thinking that. I got up thinking, oh my God, it's Thursday. Well, it's not Thursday, it's Wednesday. <laughs> and uh sorry i got something going on in there and i'm trying to type at the same time um and um i look at situations like that and i think okay well today it is you know, and then I begin to plan my day, and I begin to look at everything around me, and I go, okay, what am I going to do? What is this and that? And things change. Things are going to be changing in the next couple of months, and, you know, I'm just going to have to go with the flow, aren't I? Besides, it's only Wednesday. It's another day that I'm awake And I'm grateful to be alive and to be well and to be able to get around and do things that I have to do and things like that. And I'm glad for the people around me and I'm glad for, you know, just ha just glad. I'm glad I wake up and sun and everything is going and yeah, I get a chance to another chance to live another day. And I get another chance to bring you information tearing away the veil of deceit to show you who's behind the curtains pushing the buttons and pulling the handles. And I tell you exactly what's going on. And I don't know everything and I'm in full acceptance to that. And I want to totally admit that to you. Although the information that I do have I can share and you can go look it up yourself. So it's a really good day, and I really enjoy coming to all of you and sharing with you what's going on. I happened to, after the break, I happened to, to come across an article. Actually, no, I was listening to... Pete Santilli this morning talk about Jim Trafficant, who was a former congressman. He had an accident on his tractor today in Ohio, and he's not doing so well, so prayers out to him as well. But after the break, I'm going to read to you his proposal for America. So I'll be back right after this. Don't wait until another natural or man-made disaster strikes. Have at least 72 hours of emergency gear near you at all times, and that includes food. Get your emergency food supply today. Go to freeamericaradio.us and at the top of the page, click on the emergency food supply link. Help your family by purchasing as much emergency food supply as you need. You'll be helping out your family and Free America Radio Network. Thank you. Catch up on the latest news and controversy and more 
on The Spencer Hughes Show on Spreaker.com and SpencerHughes.net. Howdy, howdy, howdy. This is the Views Express Live right here on the Free America Radio Network. I am so glad you're here on the 24th of September, 2014. Yes, I'm here. It's live. It's not Memorex. It's not a podcast. I'm live. Hello. Go to freeamericaradio.us if you're not already there listening to the show. Go to Free America Radio on Facebook. Got to read you uh, something from former Congressman Jim Traficant, who uh, word has it that he had an a tractor accident at his home on in uh, Ohio. His website is projectfreedomusa.org. And I'm going to read this to you because he's a former congressman and he's laid out a plan for the United States. And he's a former congressman. He's also a, was a sheriff for several terms in Youngstown, Ohio, before he became a congressman. He's also a quarterback at the University of Pittsburgh in 1960, running there. Upon graduation, he was drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers before accumulating uh, injuries, which ended his career in football. In Congress, Traficant spearheaded a bill which became law requiring the IRS to go to court before they could take families' homes. In the year preceding the Traficant bill becoming law, the IRS seized 10,500 family homes without having to prove their case in court. In the year 1998-99, after the Traficant bill became law, and the IRS had to prove their case only 57 homes were taken. Please send out your positive thoughts and prayers to him and his family. I haven't got word yet as to what has happened, what his condition is. So if you have information and if you're at Spreaker.com slash Free America Radio Network, jump in the chat room and let me know. Thank you very much. Project Freedom USA, the plan, as Jim Traficant laid out. Our great nation is in trouble. Millions of Americans are fed up, mad as hell, but don't know how or what they can do about it. The time has come for the Americans to take back our government. Jim Traficant says, I was one of several frustrated, um, several featured speakers, he says, in April 2014 at the Freedom Law School uh, conference held in Orlando, Florida, hosted by Freedom Law School President Payman Motahida. Payman is a young, dynamic leader who possesses the intelligence and charisma to inspire his students with knowledge and dedication and truth. Jim Traficant says, I addressed a conference on America's failed economy and trade policies that have produced massive government debt and hardship. I presented my plan of replacing our communist progressive income tax with a flat national sales tax. He says, while in Congress, I had joined forces with two brilliant Republican members, Billy Tozen of Louisiana and Dan Schaefer of Colorado to sponsor a national retail sales tax bill. Both of them retired, and I was separated from Congress, but others took up the issue to no avail. Jim Traficant says, I explained this genesis to the conference and presented the details, and spontaneous de- a spontaneous decision was made to advance this proposal in the form of a national project to educate and energize the American people to impact Washington from without since there has been no innovative developments to reverse our nation's continuing decline from within. I'm going to stop right there and say this. A lot of things happen in a person's life that sometimes they regret. I would say that former congressman, when he was a congressman, doesn't regret putting this bill forward. 
I believe in a flat tax across the board, no matter if you make a million dollars a month or a thousand dollars a month, does not matter. I believe in a flat tax across the board. I believe in people, if, if you want taxes, I believe that people should keep all their money that they make at a job. I don't believe that should be taxed at all. Okay? There's a lot of things that I look at, a lot of things I know I've said in the past that I've had to make amends or correct, but I can tell you this much. When I look at the United States of America and how far they have gotten away from the principles and the concepts of our founding fathers, I can tell you right now that it is better to go by way of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence than to continue to put up with this bull crap coming out of Washington, D.C. That's just the way it is, and that's the way I feel. Jim Traficant said... At uh, ProjectFreedomUSA.org, the plan, he says, the proposal is now Project Freedom USA. American Free Press executives Willis and Elizabeth Carto were present and recognized the tremendous potential of this innovative plan. They have committed to support Project Freedom USA through their weekly newspaper, American Free Press, and to provide office space and support staff for our national office in Washington, D.C., Jim Traficant says, I have been named national director. We have already initiated operations in several states and will be announcing directors in the near future. Appointments will be made throughout the country as Project Freedom USA moves forward. Jim Traficant also says, anyone interested in participating can contact us at the contact link at the top of the homepage, which is projectfreedomusa.org. He goes on to say, this is a grassroots program. You need not be a big shot to join. This is a voluntary effort of regular Americans wanting to save our nation. There will be financial opportunities available as the project moves forward. He says, read carefully. If you agree with our program, we want and need your help. The program is straightforward. We are not free, uh, period. We have a massive central government coming at us. Many Americans fear our government. You might recall that the IRS actually testified before Congress that, quote, without fear we cannot collect taxes, unquote. Our government is too big. It's time that Congress stop this madness by setting standards, not creating government largesse. The sales tax of 15% will probably not even rise, uh, not even raise prices. In parentheses, he writes, remember, you get to keep your entire paycheck instead of paying 15% plus to the IRS in the case of most working Americans. And see below, some experts say that the burden of the IRS-related government paperwork regulations causes businesses to add a full 25% to their prices. Close parentheses. He goes on to say several studies report that the current income tax code builds a 25% compliance cost into all of our products. In addition, every man, woman, and child in America also has an annual $850 per year cost just to comply with this communist tax code. Also, the 15% sales tax will serve as Americans' first non-protectionist border-adjusted tax, making our exports more competitive and our imports finally subject to the same tax as our own products. Social Security and Medicare will be fully funded with a lockbox to prevent any more use of these funds for any other purpose than they are intended. It's simple. This plan will be fair. Everybody pays. Everyone carries their own weight. This is the only way to save America. In addition, there will be a rebate to protect the truly poor and needy to help with basic needs. Jim Traficant goes on to say it's time. Our current income tax system subsidies or subsidizes illegitimacy, produces massive government dependency, kills investment, and, and industry and destroys our exports while rewarding imports, all of which has contributed mightily 
to chasing our jobs overseas. The sales tax will bring industries, jobs, and corporations back to America. They will have this progressive communist tax burden lifted from their profits while eliminating our massive trade deficit. I'm going to stop right there and say this. Our GDP is just about matching our national debt, which you can say as your home mortgage loans and the, 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 the worth of your home, you can say this, that not only are your homes, but the United States of America is now economically underwater. Okay, We have no other choice but to file bankruptcy against the $18 trillion that the government says we owe. Jim Traficant goes on to say, Project Freedom USA also returns any budget surplus back to each household in the form of a national dividend. In parentheses, it says the state of Alaska has returned such a state dividend back to Alaskan families for years because of the surplus consulted by oil. Every election, we hear the politicians shouting that, quote-unquote, the rich don't pay enough taxes. Truth is, these same politicians give tax breaks to their rich supporters as soon as the election is over. Jim Traficant says, my father told me to beware about this, quote-unquote, beat up on the rich strategy. He was a truck driver all of his life. He told me, Jimbo, never, I never worked for a poor guy. If someone doesn't invest their money and take a risk, men like me would not have a job, unquote. Jim Traficant says, my dad was a very wise man. He goes on to say, nobody is hired by a poor man. Profit is not a dirty work. Um, we must incentivize our economy and make America more hospitable to investment. The private sector creates real jobs. Governmental sectors create more debt. He goes on to say, join us, get involved, read on, and learn more about Project Freedom USA. Think about it. He says, fear, a government agency saying they must uh, use fear to collect taxes from the American people. Enough is enough. Time has come for a new financial program to empower all Americans and save for our nation. Or save our nation. Facts are facts, folks. Think about this. I'm going to use this as an analogy because when growing up, I'm sure that... <laughs> guys, I'm sure you mowed your grandma's lawn a time or two. If I wanted something, I had to save for it. I don't believe parents should be paying their own children to do chores around the house. That kid lives there. That's his obligation for the family. Now, if the parents want to give them an allowance, that's all right. But don't work around the house like some indentured servant. You know what I mean? Well... There's a fine line between being an indentured servant and getting an allowance. I don't believe parents should pay their kids to do anything around the house. I think children should understand or at least be taught and, 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 and instructed on what self-responsibility is. You ever hear the story of the prodigal son going home. It's a perfect example of honoring your parents. So why should the kids expect the parents to give them anything? Okay? On the other hand, we've all done chores for other people. If I wanted something, I saved for it. When I had, you know, when I was working and everything and doing what I was doing and working in construction and warehousing and kitchens and just doing everything, I wanted something I saved for. It took me a few months, but I got it. I didn't have credit. I still don't have credit. I think it's the worst piece of crap on the face of the planet. 
Grandma taught me better than that. Might take you a little while to save the money to get what you want, but at least you save the money to get what you want. You didn't go into debt for it. And here's the problem with America. America thinks that, well, Washington, D.C. has used fear and intimidation to tell us that we have to give them money. And they created a couple of things to take the money from us. And if we didn't give it to them, they would come take our homes and whatever other property we had. Folks, that's not a sovereign or free nation. That's a communist nation, okay? If you have to work in your job to have a third or more of your paycheck given to the federal government and very little of it given back to the state, you're not working for yourself, nor are you taking home all of your money. You're not working to, su to supply the community. You're working with the blood, sweat, and the tears that you do, that you have, you're working for the state, and they di dictate to you how much you're going to get back, how much your county's going to get, how much your state's going to get. That's freaking communism, folks. By the way, I don't care if somebody wants to argue with me until they're blue in the face and, 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 and shout it from the rooftops. I don't care what people say. We are paying taxes by fear and intimidation. And primarily, taxes are illegal under the current situation that we have. That is why I say we need a flat tax across the board. There's a country, and I can't remember the name of the country, that gives their people who are out of work money every month. Now, would that incentivize, would that, would that give the incentive for people to get up off their butt and go try to find a job, pay for gas to go and do things? Oh, by the way, speaking of taxes, if you have a job and you move to another state or you're in the process of finding another job and you use money to put in the gas, to do this, to get resumes, whatever, you, and you do that, you can write that off at the end of the year. If you're looking for the same type of job that you were doing before, go look it up. It's in the tax book. They wrote it. It's there. Okay? I don't give a crap if people say, well, it's, it's, it's the law. No, it's not. It's a big dude walking up behind you, grabbing your arm, Putting it, putting it up behind your neck, grabbing your wallet, and taking out the $98 of the $100 that was there, and then saying thank you and walking away. Okay? Nobody wants to pay taxes. I understand that, and they try everything they can not to pay taxes. They find every loophole they can to not pay taxes. But former Congressman Jim Traficant said, said it perfectly. <laughs> and I will read you the first eight things that he said. He says at projectfreedomusa.org, this, this is the plan for Project Freedom USA. Number one, eliminate all income and payroll taxes. Now, anybody talking like that might get SWAT teamed. Bring it on, NSA. Number two, Jim Traficant writes here, replace income taxes and payroll taxes with a flat 15% national retail sales tax on all new goods and services. I agree. 
Number three, repeal the 16th Amendment of our Constitution. Number four, abolish the Internal Revenue Service. Number five, the contractual relationship with the Federal Reserve System is canceled, thus placing all monetary policy back under the control of Congress as mandated, go look that word up, by our Constitution. Number six, all purchases of our bonds and treasury bills will be paid. Number seven, all debt owed to the Federal Reserve as interest is hereby repudiated. Don't know what that word is? Go look it up. Number eight, Congress shall issue debt-free, interest-free money for the nation backed by our gold, silver, uh, national assets as well as the goods and services made available by American businesses in full faith and confidence in our powerful economy. You know what that means? Let the market work for itself. The government ha should not have any fingers in the, in the pie of economy. The market, you and I, businessmen, we, we can come together and let the market work for itself. It will adjust itself in the times that it's needed. Go look it up. It works. <laughs> After the bottom of the hour break, I'll read. I'll continue to read this. There's more to it. But right now, I'm going to go to the Spreaker side of things and say hello to TNN Radio. How you doing, long time no see? Says, vote now for the second Spreaker.com uh, awards. Yes, they are. They're the second annual. You can go to W www.wtnnradio.blogspot.com Check it out. That's www.wtnnradio.blogspot.com Awesome. Go check it out if you vote for this show. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that very much. Appreciate it. After the bottom of the hour break, I'll come back and read you the rest of what's on ProjectFreedomUSA.org uh, and uh, the National Retail Sales Tax. I want to make it perfectly clear where I stand. I don't believe in taxes at all, but if our so-called leaders insist that we have to pay them, then it should be a national retail sales tax of 15% across the board. Okay? Period. Done. I No state taxes, no nothing. No, uh-uh, no. Get rid of all that. And guess what? Just like when you mowed your grandma's lawn and wanted to save up to buy that new bicycle when you were a kid, that's exactly what this government's going to have to do. You want to spend a million and a half or two million dollars on a new jet? Have a bake sale. I believe this government, Washington, D.C., and the trade packs that we have with other countries, I think we need to call them in right now. We need to call them up and say, you owe us a couple of hundred billion dollars. How about paying us now? There you go. A lot of things going on. A lot of things happening. You can email me at freeamericaradio at usa.com. That's freeamericaradio at usa.com. Please do. I want to hear from you. Put in radio in the... Uh, Subject line, so I know you heard this show. You can go to freeamericaradio.us, contribute as much as you want. I would I accept donations through PayPal and Bitcoin. Also, you can sponsor the show. That'd be cool. Or go get your emergency food supply there at freeamericaradio.us. I shall return right after this. You're listening to The Views Expressed right here on the Free America Radio Network. The world as we know it is changing. 
we must speak out against the tyranny in our country. Stand up. Speak out. Get involved. Live Truth Radio. The reality underneath the honesty. LiveTruthRadio.com The Wayne S. Pierce Show on the Free America Radio Network. Go to thewaynespierceshow.weebly.com for more information. And catch The Wayne S. Pierce Show Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 12 noon Pacific, 3 Eastern on the Free America Radio Network. Time to take our republic back, folks. Brian Bonner, the uncooperative radio show host, will tell you how. Join us for the ride of your life. Using humor and the facts, we will expose the news that the lamestream media refuses to report. The Constitution is a solution, and we can prove it. Listen in and find out what it means to be an uncooperative citizen of these United States. You can find our show at uncooperativeradio.com, and we are rebroadcast on redstatetalkradio.com. Sharing the truth one fact at a time. This is the Free America Radio Network. Folks, welcome back. This is the Views Express right here for the 24th of September, 2014. How y'all doing? Hey, let's get back to the ProjectFreedomUSA.org. And I was reading to you uh, Jim Traficant, former congressman, his plan. Uh, I do want to remind people that he did have an accident on his property in Ohio. A tractor accident. I don't know what the outcome is. I haven't heard anything. If you have heard anything, please uh, let me know at freeamericaradio at usa.com. Freeamericaradio at usa.com or go to spreaker.com and go to Free America Radio Network and join me in the chat. And let me know. Thank you. <clears throat> Previously, I read the plan that Jim Traficant laid out Project Freedom USA, and now I'm going to read you the National Retail Sales Tax, and what that will be is Jim Traficant laid it out here at projectfreedomusa.org. Number one, end all withholding. Workers would get their entire pay, thus empowered to make their own financial decisions instead of having Washington politicians making such choices for them. Number two, no more inheritance or gift taxes. Number three, no more tax on savings of any, any type. Number four, no more corporation tax. This tax is paid by consumers in the final analysis. This tax also makes American, America's companies weak and non-competitive, forcing them to leave America. Thank you, NAFTA and GATT, that Bill Clinton signed into law. Number five, no more capital gains tax. Yes, none. We, wanna, we want to reward those who invest in America. That's what creates jobs. Number six, no more tax on used goods. Number seven, no more tax on Social Security and Medicare. The 15% national sales tax will fund both programs. Number eight, no tax on investments. Now I'm going to stop right there and say this. Now, a lot of people might say that, well, you know, if you don't have any taxes and if, if you only get so much, then how are we going to protect our borders? 
No one's protecting our borders now except the citizens of the United States of America. And the thing is, is that our military should not be anywhere in the world except in the United States of America protecting our borders. Period. End of sentence. <clears throat> Jim Traficant writes uh, the rest of this. You can see this at projectfreedomusa.org. And he writes, you must consider that only 53% of eligible taxpayers actually pay any income tax. How much more can workers pay? Sales tax would be paid by all. Drug dealers, illegal immigrants, and foreign visitors would be would all be paying into a general fund and Social Security and Medicare trust fund. There would be no more tax evasion. The vast criminal underground would now pay taxes. The visitors from Europe and Japan and China would all pay taxes with their spending privileges. The rich spend more, so they will pay more taxes. No more tax forms, liens, or seizures. No more tax trials or garnishments. No more tax lawyers, no account tax accountants. No more April 15th deadlines, no late charges, no more penalties, no more fear, no more slavery. Jim Traficant goes on to say, some say we need no taxes. We have a great nation, and it takes money to run it. We must finance our nation fairly and equally. Some experts say that our 15% uh, sales tax is not enough to finance our government. They are correct. That is why Project Freedom USA mandates the following government actions. Number one, reduce the size of our government by 30%. I would say by 60, but okay. Number two, eliminate the Department of Education, the Department of Energy, the Environmental Protection Agency, the Office of Homeland Security, any other government program that can be handled by the respective states. Jim Traficant goes on to say, so come aboard. We're still a free enterprise capitalist nation, not socialist or communist. We live in an age of plenty. The monetary policies enforced by the Federal Reserve Board the Fed, is to put it in the best possible light 100 years out of date. There is no reason that a few bankers should be warping uh, our national destiny, holding back commerce and industry and creating artificial scarcity as well as needless stress due to unnecessary interest-generated debt in this age of plenty. As provided for in the original Federal Reserve Act of 1913, we can simply divorce the Fed and restore the issuing of interest-free money for a nation back to Congress where the Constitution mandates it to be. The U.S. Congress would create an, and oversee a national monetary office which would operate in the open, issue interest-free money for the nation as well as be audited in many ways from inside and out of government to ensure honest and a, uh, honesty and accuracy the duty of these delegated the duty of those delegated by congress to issue money for a nation's economy is to issue currency and credit in sufficient supply to meet the needs of commerce and industry let's put america back under the constitution let's implement the free enterprise economy our founding fathers envisioned with a fair playing field of opportunity for everyone you can help if you want to help you can help the nation mobilize behind project freedom usa here's the email address folks email to freedompath2000 at gmail.com or write project freedom usa 429 north main street poland ohio 44514 that's what Jim Traficant said now if you miss any of that it's over on Free America Radio on Facebook now 
I want to direct your attention to a thought. The thought is, if you were in a position to bring forth changes that would positively affect a nation, what would they be? What would they be? Would they be taxing the people at a fair rate or a flat tax? Getting rid of all those useless departments? Cutting governmental personnel by 30 to 60 percent? Streamlining everything in the government? And of course, streamlining everything in the rest of the United States? specifically? Or if you had the opportunity to positively change the direction of this nation, what would you do? I would say that each state is able to take care of themselves politically, economically, because of the fact that each state already has three branches of government laid out by the Constitution prior to 1871. The rules, the laws, the ordinances that would ensue in those states would be generated by the people of those states and instructions given to the leaders in those sections of those states. Not dictated by one overlord to be granted as privileges to the citizens and in, and in that case create the ensuing enslavement of the people of those states. The question really comes down to this. Is it plausible to continue? No, let me say it like I had it in my head. It is impossible to continue to support this nation with the policies they have, with the laws that they're implementing, the illegal laws that they're implementing under executive action or executive order, it is impossible for this country to sustain itself much longer. I don't think the United States of America will see 240, what is it, uh, 238 years right now, is that what it is? I don't think they're going to see 240 years. I really, really don't. I could be wrong, and I hope I am, but I don't see it. I see that the current administration has created a lot of animosity as well as a lot of enemies I know that this current regime under the Obama administration has created a lot of, uh, created a lot of heartache and pain and suffering but I also know that within the darkness there is light and that light is you a free sovereign citizen liberated from the tyrannical policies of this current regime standing up for yourself standing up for what is right standing up for God standing up for the Constitution standing up for the Bill of Rights standing up for a fair and equal society in terms of knowing that your neighbor 
is just as free as you are and believes something completely different, understanding that you don't have to agree with him, but he's part of this thing called humanity. So within that, your obligation is to him enjoying his presence, not pointing fingers and judging him for what you think he should be and what you think he's not. It's a terrible situation when you get judged by your best friends. It's even a tragic situation when you get judged by your neighbors. You ever have a neighbor that Seems to have an attitude with you every time you walk around them. And then they walk into their, you know, little abode and they just don't even pay attention to you. And you don't even know what you've done to them that caused them to do that. Switch that around. The world knows what the United States of America is. And our allies are, well, let's just say there's a collective facepalm going on right now. And. People are absolutely baffled by why we are doing what we do. Here's the thing, if it was... If we did not have the implementation of the IRS, or the uh, Internal Revenue Act and the Federal Reserve Act in 1913, we would see a future that looks more like the Jetsons than the Clampets. If you got those references, you know what I mean. Everybody can and will stand on their own. Everybody can and will get through their difficulties. We're not perfect. We do disagree with one another. And I don't care if you're... I, I don't... It, doesn't bother me that you're a different religion than I am. Doesn't bother me that you're a different color than I am. It doesn't bother me that you affiliate with a different political uh, party than I do. I'm nonpartisan, so I don't affiliate with either one of them. What matters is that we come together and defend our freedoms and liberties in this country that are for, found that are that our relatives way back when 238 years ago put forth into this nation in 1791 15 years after the after the signing of the declaration of independence we had people get together and discuss a constitution. And in the halls, I believe it was Philadelphia at that time, people got together and asked, well, okay, people want this, people want that. How are we going to... And they understood that you're not going to please everyone. So they created this constitution and then they read it and read it and debated it and debated it and said wait a minute hold on we got to have 10 amendments to this constitution because actually there were 12 but later on they combined a couple of them they're going to have 10 amendments to this constitu constitution because people aren't going to just you know say okay that's it let's do whatever no they're going to be upset Again, can't please everyone. So what did they do? They debated it. They sat down. They, they looked at this reasonably, rationally. They debated the issues. They looked at what, and they probably, I'm sure, went out and talked to the people out in the streets and said, hey, we're debating this. What can we do? Go talk to your constituents. Let's see what we can do. This was... 1788 folks putting all this stuff together into what was what we know now as the Constitution of the United States of America but
The problem was that nobody could agree to just one thing, hence the Tenth Amendment. I mean the Ten Amendments. The Constitution of the United States of America starts out with a note, and I'll put this up on Free America Radio on Facebook. The following text is a transcript of the Constitution as it was inscribed by Jacob Shallis on parchment, the document on display in the rotunda of the National Archives Museum. Items that are hyperlinked have since been amended and or superseded. The, uh, the authenticated text of the Constitution can be found on the website of the Government Printing Office. So, that's the note. But let me read you the preamble. It says, We the people of the United States... In order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, making sure everybody's, you know, healthy and all that, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, that means you and I, folks, do ordain and establish this constitution, get this, for the United States of America. Okay. Let me let me read that last part again, or let me read that whole thing again, and I'll break this down after the top of the hour break. Frankly, I was going to... Let me stop there. I'll do that after the break, because I don't have a whole lot of time. before the break because I wanted to let you know that when our founding fathers got together and debated these issues debated what we need to do okay I'm sure <laughs> I am sure that they struggled for many, many hours putting all the things together, putting all this stuff together, and, and, and literally literally almost coming to blows physical fights I've heard stories I've read certain things about that they literally almost beat one another up I'm sure that they finally calmed their nerves and drank a little wine and smoked a little herb and tobacco folks because most people were tobacco farmers back then I'm sure they stopped and thought, what are we doing? Why can't we do something that is going to be, that is going to have a positive end to all of this? So, it went from there. Fast forward a hundred years or so, and I'm sure that some of the politicians then were saying the same thing. Why are we doing this? Why did we allow this to happen? Why are these nefarious characters dictating to us how this country should be run when we, the Congress of the United States of America, are the ones that should be running it ourselves? The Act of 1871 incorporated Washington, D.C. into what it is today, or yeah, they grew it, had to grow. It's incorporated. It's a business, 
folks. Go look it up. Yes, you can go search Freemasons, Illuminati. You can go all look. Go look at Albert Pike. You can go. The best place to go to to hear all that and to get the backstory of the Illuminati and the Freemasons is Bob Brutus over at WakingUpTheMasses.com. But facts are facts, folks. Go up a few years after that and you will see you will see some things that may or may not surprise you at all 1910 a couple of people a few people a handful of people got together and decided hey we're a bunch of elites with a lot of money, and we don't want to put our money in a in the system. We want to keep it. Oh, but wait a minute. If we keep it, we can loan it out. Oh, hey, cool. The creature of Jekyll Island. Go look that up. 1913, President Woodrow Wilson signed behind closed doors the, the Federal Reserve Act. A few months later, signed the Internal Revenue Act. And we've been screwed ever since. We don't need them. We had roads, we had schools, we had fire departments, we had people, we had things were working out just fine. And then that came along. And now we're screwed. When I come back from the top of the hour break, I'm going to read the Constitution of the United States, or I should say, as it says here, the Constitution for the United States of America. Because there is a reason that we are in the difficulties now there is a reason for it let's trace it back folks because i know we can and it go it goes back to the federal reserve act it goes back to the federal reserve it goes back to the irs it goes it takes away the power of the treasury within the within government to be able to hear from congress to distribute the money the way it needs to be distributed the Federal Reserve and the IRS takes that away and then increases everything, and we have to pay for it. So it just comes down to what do you want to pay for, how you want to live. And like I said before, the question I asked before, if you had a way to positively impact, you know, with a positive result of the United States, what would you do? It's real simple, folks. What would you do? It's one of those things, okay? How would you play it out? How, how would it be to you? I, you know, I, I, I can tell you right now, the states can do what they need to do for an income to protect their borders. There wouldn't be a personal income tax for the federal government. That's, I would not have that at all. Folks, I'll be back right after this. FreeAmericaRadio.us. FreeAmericaRadio at USA.com. That's FreeAmericaRadio at USA.com. I'm here every day, Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. I'll be right back. Catch up on the latest news and controversy and more on The Spencer Hughes Show on Spreaker.com and SpencerHughes.net. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, September 24th, 2014. Gold open today at $1,221, silver open at $17.68, and Bitcoin is trading around $427. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin 
the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. Vote Michael Cargill to get the cars moving. Learn more or sign up to volunteer at CargillForTexas.com. Political advertisement paid for by the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. In the news today, businesses are damaged and at least two protesters arrested following a Tuesday night confrontation in Ferguson, Missouri. USA Today reports it happened after a memorial to Michael Brown, who was shot to death by a police officer August 9th, went up in flames. Protesters believe the fire was intentionally set Tuesday morning. Firefighters on the scene reported the smell of gasoline. The exact cause remains under investigation. The activist organization We Cop Watch has gained national media attention following their efforts to empower and educate residents of Ferguson, Missouri. KSDK reports that on Saturday, We Cop Watch partnered with Ferguson-based Canfield Watchmen to give out free cameras and provide information on how to film police encounters. David Wint represents the Canfield Watchmen. It's plain and simple. We need more cop watches, not cops with cameras. The only way that our communities can be safe is if we unify and protect our communities. And the only way we can unify and protect our communities is if we are educated. We Cop Watch was founded in 2013 with the goal of reducing violence and harassment through accountability. Notorious activist Adam Kokesh is going on tour. The American Campfire Freedom Tour will take Kokesh to America's largest 150 cities. He will be giving out paperback copies of his book, Freedom, which he began writing while in jail. He has put together a crowdfunding campaign that will cover the cost of printing books to distribute. You can find the fundraiser by visiting Indiegogo.com and typing American Campfire Freedom Tour into the search box. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's, Southwestern Style Burritos, now with two locations in Austin at 500 East Ben White Boulevard and 2828 Rio Grande Boulevard. Find them online, CaboBob's.com. And support comes from Sovereign Living, a podcast, blog, and reality show about what it takes to live a voluntary and natural life. Check out the blog, SovereignLiving.com, and watch episode one of the soon-to-be-released reality show at SovereignLiving.tv. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, September 24th, 2014. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com and like us on Facebook at Facebook.com, The Liberty Beat. 35 Democrats are leading an effort to ban children from working on tobacco farms because of health problems cited in a Human Rights Watch report. The Associated Press reports that the representatives sent a letter to Labor Secretary Thomas Perez asking for his support for setting an age limit for children working on the farms. One bill would amend the Fair Labor Standards Act of 1938 to ban children under the age of 18 from working in conditions where they have direct contact with tobacco plants. In May, Human Rights Watch released a report detailing an abundance of incidents involving children who experienced vomiting, nausea, and headaches while working on the farms. All of those symptoms reported are consistent with nicotine poisoning. Vegetable farmers in Morlaix, France, upset about falling product prices due to Russian embargoes on European foods shrinking their export market, staged a destructive protest. According to the BBC, about 100 farmers during this past weekend first set fire to an insurance office and then turned their ire on the town's main tax office, where they dumped unsold artichokes and cauliflowers, smashed out windows, and then set the building ablaze. No injuries are reported. The mayor of Morlaix issued a statement condemning what he calls the acts of looting and violence. Today's edition of the Liberty Beat, brought to you by Brave New Books, your source for One World Way, Tangy Tangerine, and Clearly Filtered Fluoride Filters, located in Austin, Texas at 1904 Guadalupe Street or online at bravenewbookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, September 24th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Want to know what's happening all around us? You do? Great! Come check out the Diana and Wayne's Grab Bag Potpourri Talk Show, Friday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on Spreaker.com. Hey! 
Have a nice trip. See you next fall. Attending their daughter's wedding in South Africa promised to be a vacation of a lifetime. But first, they had to face the treacherous gauntlet known as modern day travel. Waiting for them on the other side of the world are an honest-to-goodness safari with amorous lions and elephants with anger issues, a life-affirming visit to a South African school, and an anxious bride and groom standing patiently at the airport with a sign that reads, What took you so long? The answers lie within the pages of Please Hold Thumbs, a not-so-round trip to South Africa. A true tale of turbulence and triumph from travel mug Scott Cherney, author of Red Asphalt. Available at Amazon.com in paperback and on the Kindle. This is Michael Vera with Late Night in the Midlands, and you're listening to the Views Expressed Live with your host, Reverend Wayne Pierce, on the Free America Radio Network. We cannot continue to rely only on our military in order to achieve the national security objectives that we've set. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong, just as well-funded. The affirmative task we have now is, uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order because the global order is changing again. And the institutions of the world that worked so well in the post-World War II era for decades, uh, they need to be strengthened. And some have to be changed. So we have to do what we do best. We have to lead. We have to lead. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order. A world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. In order to ensure the security and continuing stability, the Republic will be reorganized into the first galactic Empire for a safe and secure society. Folks, this is the Views Express Live right here on the Free America Radio Network for the 24th of September 2014. I am your host, Reverend Wayne S. Pierce. Thank you for joining me today. How y'all doing? Are you good? Are you smiling? It's the middle of the week. Or whenever you're hearing this, it is the middle of the week. I want to do something that a lot of people, I don't hear alternative or independent media people do this very often, if, if at all. <clears throat> and I want to uh, give you this. I'm going to read to you, if I can get through it. <laughs> you know what? 
I, I just made an executive decision. Okay? I'm going to read to you the Constitution for the United States of America. Because I believe that people need to really understand what is going on. Okay? People really need to know. And they need to know... where we stand as a nation. I'm only going to read a few things here because it is quite long and I don't have that much time. I'm going to put this on the Free America Radio Facebook page for you to take a look at. And read yourself as well. And right below that, as soon as I post it, and it's posted as we speak, I will put the Bill of Rights in the comments section. Now, why am I doing this? Again, you all need to know what we stand on. I'm only going to take a few uh, sections here and I'll read this. I'll read parts of it today, parts of it tomorrow, parts of it, you know, the end of the week. But I want to get to something specific and that is the Bill of Rights because that is very important to understand. The Constitution of the United States says, We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, and promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty unto ourselves, to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Article 1, Section 1, all legislative powers herein granted shall be vested in a Congress of the United States, which shall consist of a Senate and a House of Representatives. Section 2, the House of Representatives shall be composed of members chosen every second year by the people of the several states and the electors in each state shall have the qualifications requisite for electors of the most numerous branch of the state legislature. Uh, legislature. No person shall be a representative who shall not have attained to the age of 25 years and been seven years a citizen of the United States and who shall not, when elected, be an inhabitant of that state in which he shall be chosen. Now, I'm going to stop right there and give you a little note. The authenticated text of the Constitution can be found on the website of the government printing office and in this section I'm going to read to you or the part of this section I'm going to read to you is in part of it is in red it says here in the second in the third paragraph of the second section it says representatives in direct taxes shall be apportioned among the several states which may be included within this union 
according to their respective numbers, which shall be determined by adding the whole number of free persons, including those bound to service for a term of years, and excluding Indians not taxed three-fifths of all other persons. Now, how can they do that? That's an interesting little thing that you need to examine. Continuing, the actual enumeration shall be made within three years after the first meeting of Congress of the United States and within every subsequent term of ten years in such manner as they shall by law direct the number of representatives shall not exceed one for every 30,000 but each state shall have at least one representative. And until such enumeration shall be made, the state of New Hampshire shall be entitled to choose three, Massachusetts eight, Rhode Island and Providence plantations one, uh, Connecticut five, New York six, New Jersey four, Pennsylvania eight, Delaware one, Maryland six, Virginia ten, North Carolina five, South Carolina five, and Georgia three. When the vacancies happen in the, represent, uh, in the representation from any state, the executive authority, therefore, shall issue writs of election to fill such vacancies. The House of Representatives shall choose their speaker and other officers and shall have the sole power of impeachment. Okay. That's Section 1 and 2 of the Constitution of the United States. But right now, I want to direct your attention to the Bill of Rights. I will refer to this in the next several days. And um, <clears throat> and will tell you more. I'll go back and forth, in other words. The Charters of Freedom, quote, a new world is at hand, unquote. On September 25th, 1789, the first Congress of the United States proposed 12 amendments to the Constitution. In 1789, the joint resolution of Congress proposing the amendments is on display in the rotunda in the National Archives Museum. Ten of the proposed 12 amendments were ratified by three-fourths of the state legislatures on December 15, 1791. The ratified articles, Articles 3 and, uh, through 12, constitute the first ten amendments of the Constitution or the U.S. Bill of Rights. In 1992, 203 years after it was proposed, Article 2 was ratified as the 27th Amendment of the Constitution, Article 1 was never ratified. The transcription of the 1789 Joint Resolution of Congress proposing 12 amendments to the U.S. Constitution, Congress of the United States, begun and held at the City of New York on Wednesday, the 4th of March, 1799. The conventions of a number of states having at the time of their adopting the Constitution expressed a desire in order to prevent misconstruction or abuse of its powers that further declaratory and restrictive clauses should be added. And as extending the ground of public confidence in the government will best ensure the bene uh, beneficent ends of its institution. Resolved by the Senate and the House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled two-thirds of both houses concurring that the following articles be proposed to the legislatures of the several states as amendments to the Constitution of the United States, all or any of which articles, when ratified by three-fourths of the said legislatures, to be valid to all intents and purposes as part of the said Constitution, vis-a-vis -vis articles in addition to an amendment 
of the Constitution of the United States of America proposed by Congress and ratified by the legislatures of the several states pursuant of the fifth article of the original Constitution. Article the first, after the first enumeration required by the first article of the Constitution, there shall be one representative for every 30,000 until the number shall amount to 100,000, after which the proportion shall be so regulated by Congress, but there shall be not less than 100 representatives, nor less than one representative for every 40,000 persons until the number of representatives shall amount to 200, after which the proportion shall be regulated by Congress, that there shall not be less than 200 representatives, nor more than one representative for every 50,000 persons. In other words, the delegation, the, the, the delegating the authority, this is when they started setting out the precincts and all this, that, and the other thing. And it, Nowadays, it's so damn confusing that nobody knows anything. And when you go talk to your representatives in your area, they look at you like, you're a freaking alien from another planet. Article the second, no law varying the compensation of the services of the senators and representatives shall take effect until an election of representatives shall have intervened. In other words, nobody gets paid until you get the job. Article number, th uh, article the third, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of press or the right of the people to peaceably or the right of people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Now, as I said in the beginning here, uh, the first two articles, the first one was just totally thrown out. The second one was the 27th Amendment. And now the third article is part of the Bill of Rights. Article the fourth, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. I make that emphasis because it shall not be infringed. Every I've said it before and I'll say it again. Every state legislator and every governor of every state that proposes any type of gun control law is in direct violation of the Second Amendment of the, United, uh, of the Bill of Rights of the United States of America. Period. End of sentence. Gun control law is confiscation. Article the fifth, no soldier shall in a time of peace be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner, nor in the time of war, but in a manner to be prescribed by law. I'd like to see that law. Thank you. Article the sixth, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized nowadays folks your neighbor you you don't have to do anything wrong you can go out and mow your lawn come in feed the dog whatever you can just be an upstanding citizen of your neighborhood your next door neighbor couldn't call the cops and say, I think he's beating his kids. They'll come and SWAT team your ass. It doesn't matter. Article the sixth, the right of the people. Oh, I just said that, didn't I? Urgh. Article number seven. No person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime unless on the presentment or indictment of a grand jury except in cases arising in the land of uh, in the land or naval forces or in the militia where in actual service in the time of war or public danger nor shall any person be subject for the same offense to be twice put in jeopardy of life or limb 
nor shall be compare, uh, compelled in any criminal case to be the witness against himself, nor be deprived of life, liberty, and property without due process of law, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. They do that all the time, folks. Article the 8th. In all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed, which district shall have been previously ascertained by law. I want to see that law and to be informed by, of the nature and cause of the accusation to be confronted with the witnesses against him to have compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in his favor and to have the assistance of counsel for his defense. Article the ninth in suits of common law where the value uh, in controversy shall exceed twenty dollars the right of trial by jury shall be preserved and no fact tried by a jury shall be otherwise re-examined in any court of the united states than according to the rules of the common law article ten article the tenth excessive bail shall not be required nor excessive fines imposed nor cruel and unusual punishment inflicted get rid of the death penalty folks article the eleventh the enumeration of the constitution of certain rights shall not be construed or to deny or disparage others retained by the public by the people I should say let me read that again the enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people I have a right to believe in a spaghetti octopus monster and that is my so-called deity that I believe in. No one has a right to tell me I can't. Okay? Article the 12th. The powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. Folks, do you consent to the uh, unconstitutional laws that now exist in the United States of America? I do not consent. A test. Frederick Augustus Muhlenberg, Speaker of the House of Representatives, John Adams, Vice President of the United States and President of the Senate, John Beckley, Clerk of the House of Representatives, and Sam A. Otis, Secretary of the Senate. Note, now get this, folks. The capitalization and punctuation in this version is from the enrolled original of the joint resolution of Congress proposing the Bill of Rights which is on permanent display in the rotunda of the National Archives building Washington DC come <clears throat> after the break I will <clears throat> continue reading so I shall return right after this With her unique, fast-paced, witty sarcasm, Angel Clark brings you the news of the day with a creative twist. Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern on RadioFreedom.us. You can also listen to her live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM.
Lock it on to the best station on the net. The Free America Radio Network. Are you a filmmaker and want to make your epic feature film with no money, some money, and or all the money in the world? Listen to Christopher J. Taylor as he discusses everything you need to know about filmmaking and more on Film 101 on HTLA973.com. Hey folks, welcome back, welcome back. This is the Free America Radio Network. This is the Views Express Live. Go to freeamericaradio.us, donate to Free America Radio if you can. Thank you very much, appreciate that. Let me continue where I left off. Constitution of the United States of America, the amendments to the Bill of Rights... Of course, I read to you the original articles. They amended them, changed them a little, basically reorganized them, put them in different places. But it basically is the same as what we know the Bill of Rights is today. First through the Tenth Amendments. Now I want to read you the Eleventh Amendment. Passed by Congress March 4th, 1794, ratified February 7th, 1795. Note, Article 3, Section 2 of the Constitution was modified by the 11th Amendment. The judicial power of the United States shall not be construed to extend any suit in law or equity commenced or prosecuted against one of the United States by citizens of another state or by citizens or subjects of any foreign state. Get that, folks? Foreign state? Amendment number 12, passed by Congress December 9th, 1803, ratified June 15th, 1804. Note, a portion of Article 2, Section 1 of the Constitution was superseded by the 12th Amendment. Now, this is a long one, folks, but this is very, very important. The Constitution and the Bill of Rights prior to 1871 is very, very important for all of us And we need to understand that. And not only that, as Brian Lang would say on LiveTruthRadio.com, stand up, speak out, and get involved. We need to stand on the Constitution prior to 1871. We need to speak out for our freedoms and liberties. And we need to get involved in getting this information out to people. So thank you, Brian Lang. LiveTruthRadio.com. Amendment number 12. The electors shall meet in their respective states and vote by ballot for president and vice president, one of whom, at least, shall not be an inhabitant of the same state with themselves. They shall name in their ballots the person voted for as president, and in distinct ballots, the person voted for as vice president, and they shall make distinct lists of all persons voted for as president or 
and of all persons voted for as vice president. That's why we have names, a whole list of names to vote for, folks. And of the number of votes for each, which lists they shall sign and certify and transmit sealed to a seat of the government of the United States directed to the president of the Senate, which doesn't really happen, folks. It's all changed. The president of the Senate shall, in the presence of the Senate uh, and the House of Representatives, open all of the certificates and votes shall be shall then be counted. The person having the greatest number of votes for president shall be the president if such number be a majority of the whole number of the electors appointed. And if no person... Uh, have such majority than from the persons having the highest number not exceeding three on the list of those voted for as president. The House of Representatives shall choose immediately by ballot the president. But in choosing the president, the votes shall be taken by states. The representation from each state having one vote a quorum for this purpose shall consist of a member or members from two-thirds of the states, and a majority of all the states shall be necessary to a choice. This is in brackets, folks. And, and this is what has changed, I think. And if the House of Representatives shall not choose a president whenever the right of choice shall devolve upon them before the fourth day of March next following, then the vice president shall act as president as in case of the death of or other constitutional disability of the president. In other words, basically, let me get down here to your, you know, French fries and hamburger type of thing going on here so you can understand this. If within the election... The we don't get enough votes for a president, but we have enough votes for the vice president, then he shall in interim be president until we can figure out who's who won the presidency. That's how I take it, folks. That's how I'm interpreting it. <clears throat> and that section I just read in the brackets superseded by section three of the 20th Amendment. The person having the greatest number of votes as vice president shall be the vice president if such number be a majority of the whole number of the electors uh, voted, yada, yada, yada. Same thing as before. Now, here's this. But no person constitutionally ineligible to the office of president shall be eligible to that of vice president of the United States. Let me read that again. But no person constitutionally ineligible to the office of president shall be eligible to that of the vice president of the United States. Amendment number 13, passed by Congress January 31st, 1865, ratified December 6th, 1865. Took almost a whole year to do that. Note, a portion of Article 4, Section 2 of the Constitution, was superseded by the 13th Amendment. Section 1, neither slave nor involuntary servitude except as a punishment of crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted shall exist within the United States or any place subject to, de to their jurisdiction. Section 2, Congress shall have the power to enforce this article by ap appropriate legislation. And, uh, can you say prison industrial complex? Article number 14 Passed by Congress June 13, 1866, ratified July 9, 1868. Article 1, Section 2 of the Constitution was modified by Section 2 of the 14th Amendment. It's five sections here, folks. Give me some time. Be patient. Thank you. 
Section one, all persons born, get this, all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. Section 2. Representatives shall be a apportioned among the several states according to their respective numbers counting the whole number of persons in each state excluding indians not taxed but when the right to vote at any election for the choice of electors for president and vice president of the united states representatives in congress the executive and judicial offices of the state or the numbers of legislature thereof is denied to any of the male inhabitants of such state being 21 years of age changed by section one in the 26th amendment and citizens of the united states or any way abridged except for participation in rebellion or other crime the basis of representation therein shall be reduced in the proportion which the number of such male citizens shall bear to the whole number of male citizens 21 years of age in such state in other words 21 you can vote if you haven't committed a crime and therefore you know there you go pretty much the voting age was 21 now it's 18 it needs to go to 25 <laughs> okay that's just the way it is section number two no person shall be a senator or representative in congress or elector uh, of uh, president and vice president or hold any office civil or military under the united states or under any state who having previously taken an oath as a member of congress or as an officer of the united states or as a member of the uh, of any state legislature or as an executive or judicial officer of any state to support the constitution of the united states shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same or given aid or comfort to the enemy thereof but congress may by a vote of two-thirds of each house remove such disability so in other words if you uh committed rebellion against your state you can uh, 10 years from that point if you have changed your heart and you now don't want to do that anymore if you know they find out your background and you did this you cannot be a representative of that state i don't care what you did section four the validity of the public debt of the united states authorized by law including debts incurred for payment of pensions and bounties for services in suppressing insurrection or rebellion shall not be questioned let me read that again folks because that's important the validity of the public debt of the united states go look at usdebtclock.org authorized by law including debts incurred for payment of the pensions and bounties for services in suppressing insurrection or rebellion shall not be questioned but neither the united states nor any state shall assume or pay any debt or obligation incurred in aid of insurrection or rebellion against the united states or any claim for the loss or emancipation of any slave but all such debts obligations and claims shall be held illegal and void Okay. Section number five, real simple. The Congress shall have the power to enforce by appropriate legislation the previous or the provisions of this article. I got enough time to re read a couple of more, folks. Amendment number 15 passed by Congress February 26, 1869, ratified February 3rd, 1870. Section 1, the right of the citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of race, color, or previous condition of servitude. Section number 2, the Congress shall have the power to enforce this article by appropriate legislation. That's why you got all these committees and debates in, in Congress. 
Amendment number 16 passed by Congress July 20, uh, July 2nd, 1909, ratified February 3rd, 1913. Here it is, folks. We need to get rid of the 16th Amendment. The Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes on incomes from whatever source derived without appropriate uh, appropriate uh, no, apportionment there we go among the several states and without regard to any consensus or enumeration in other words they want to steal your money you made ten dollars on that you know uh, sale of that bottle of wine we want 20 percent of it that's what the government is telling you we don't give a crap where you made your money we want your money this is wrong Amendment number 17 passed by Congress May 13, 1912, ratified April 8, 1913. Note, Article 1, Section 3 of the Constitution was modified by the 17th Amendment. The Senate of the United States shall be composed of two senators for each state elected by the people thereof for six years, and each senator shall have one vote. The electors in each state shall have the qualifications requisite for electors of the most numerous branch of the state legislatures when the vac when vacancies happen in the representation of any state in the senate the executive authority of such state shall issue writs of election to fill such vacancies provided that the legislature of any state may empower the executive thereof to make temporary appointments until the people fill the vacancy by election as the legislature may direct. We've seen that now, folks. This amendment shall not be uh, so construed as to affect the election or term of any senator chosen before, it's, uh, before it becomes valid as part of the Constitution. Amendment number 18 passed by Congress December 18, 1917, ratified January 16th, 1919, repealed by the 21st Amendment. Section 1, any one, I mean, uh, excuse me, after one year from the ratification of this article, the manufacture, sale, or transportation of uh, intoxicating liquors within the importation, uh, importation thereof into or the exportation thereof from the United States and all territories subject to jurisdiction, therefore, for beverages purposes, is hereby prohibited. Section 2, Congress and its several states shall have concurrent power to enforce this article by appropriate legislation. Section 3, this article shall be inoperative unless, you get this, this article shall be inoperative unless it shall have been ratified as an amendment to the Constitution by the legislatures of the several states as provided in the Constitution within seven years from the date of the submission herein, uh, hereof to the states by Congress. Amendment number 19, passed by Congress June 4th, 1919, ratified August 18th, 1920. The right of the citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. That's the women vote now. Congress shall have power to enforce this article by appropriate legislation. In other words, that gave the women the right to vote. Some people say they shouldn't have done that. I say, kiss my butt. Everybody has a right to vote. Amendment number 20, passed by Congress March 2nd, 1932, ratified January 23rd, 1933. I don't know if I'll get through this, but I'll try. Note, or yeah, Article 1, Section 4 of the Constitution was modified by Section 2 of this amendment. In addition, a portion of the 12th Amendment was superseded by Section 3. Section 1, the terms of the President and Vice President shall end at noon on the 20th day of January and the terms of Senators and Representatives at noon on the 3rd day of January of the years in which such terms would have ended if this article had not been ratified and the terms of their successors shall begin. Section 2, Congress shall assemble at least once every year and such meetings shall begin at noon on the third day of January unless they shall by law appoint a different day. In other words, they're only supposed to meet once a year, folks, not live there. Okay. Section number three. <clears throat> 
If at a time fixed for the beginning of the term of the president, the president-elect shall have died, the vice president-elect shall become president. If a president shall not have been chosen before the time fixed for the beginning of his term, or if the president-elect shall have failed to qualify, then the vice president shall act as president until a president shall be qualified, and the Congress may by law provide for the case wherein neither a president-elect nor a vice president-elect shall have qualified, declaring who shall then act as president or the manner in which one is to act shall be selected, selected, and such person shall act accordingly until a president or vice president shall have qualified. Section 4. The Congress may by law provide for the case of the death of any of the persons from whom the House of Representatives may choose a president where uh, or whenever the right of the choice shall have devolved upon them. And for the case of the death of any of the persons from whom the Senate may choose a vice president whenever the right of the choice shall have devolved upon them. In other words, the House of Representatives, not the Supreme Court, period. Okay? Section 5. Section 1 and 2 shall take effect on the 15th day of October following the ratification of this article. And Section 6 says this article shall be inoperative unless it shall have been ratified as an amendment to the Constitution by the legislatures of three-fourths of the several states within seven years from the date of its submission. This is why amendments and and things die in the in congress is because they keep putting it off putting it off putting it off and then they say well let's just forget about it and then after seven years they're not going to bring it up because it's gone okay <clears throat> i got enough time to read amendment 21 passed by congress february 20th 1933 and ratified december 5th 1933 uh, section 1 the 18th article of amendment to the constitution uh, the 18th article of the amendment uh, to the Constitution of the United States is hereby repealed. That's the repeal of the uh, Prohibition Act. Uh, second, the transportation and importation into any state, territory, possession of the United States for delivery or use therein of intoxicating liquors in violation of the laws, therefore, is hereby prohibited. Uh, section 3, this article shall be inoperative, yada, yada, yada. Okay got a few more folks but i'll read those i'll read those tomorrow i'll put this up on uh, it's up on uh, the free america radio uh, uh, facebook page transcript of the constitution of the united states and in the comment section there it's the bill of rights so you can go check those out as well and i will read those tomorrow <clears throat> the rest of them anyway after Amendment number 21. You see, folks, here's the deal. The United States Constitution and the Bill of Rights are the foundation by which we are protected because we have God-given rights that no one can take away. We have inalienable, or in some interpretations, unalienable, which is you can't take them away, we have God-given rights that no one can take away. The United States of America was built not on the foundation of Christian teachings, but on the foundation that people were free to believe what they needed to believe for a positive outcome. Most of the people that were... Our founding fathers were deists, if you go look it up. Oh, they were Christians, brother. Why do you keep saying that? Because it's the truth and the facts. Go look it up. How many of our founding fathers were Christian? How many of the signers of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution were Christian? Go look it up. Most of them were deists. They believed in a higher power. 
If you ask them if they believed in God, yes, they do. But they, not in, you know, in a way that you would think they would. But it was based upon principles of mercy and love and forgiveness and justice and helping one another and doing what, you know, they believed was right for people. And that's why when all of this began, when they began to put together the Constitution, I'm sure they went out and talked to people to get, you know, uh, to get their input. But I'll tell you what, it was male-dominated until the women had a right to vote. It was male-dominated because that's who worked. And now we have women congressmen and representatives, congresspeople, House Senate, senators and, and, and others, House of Representatives. But I can tell you right now, after 1871, it's nothing like it was. It's a corporation. Not a free and sovereign nation like our founding fathers wanted it to be. It is now a corporation, and we are all slaves. Yes, I use that term loosely. You can consider it as we're just... We're the little gears in the wheels that keep turning and turning and turning. We're the rat in the maze not being able to get out because we've been so buffaloed into believing that everything is just fine. Nothing to see here now. Move along. And we have the governmental indoctrination institutes telling our children that George Washington and Thomas Jefferson were radicals and were extremists and they wanted freedom. And that's what some of the police are telling them, their people. Well, it's time we take this country back. It's time that we shove that Constitution and that Bill of Rights into the face of these tyrants in Washington, D.C. And it's time we tell these people that are blind, you open up your eyes now because we have a constitution and a bill of rights and we have God-given rights that cannot be taken away by this government and we will stand strong and we will defeat these morons in Washington, D.C. It might take some time and there might be a lot of bloodshed, but 3% of the colonists in 1773, 74, 75, decided for themselves that they wanted to be free and sovereign people, and they kicked the ass of the British Empire and the British Army. But then the Brits bought us back in 1871. Our taxes through IRS and the Federal Reserve Go straight to the queen, folks. Go look it up. This is your country. You better fight for it or you're going to lose it. Actually, have we lost it already? I don't know. But I certainly am not going to stand around and let the rest of this country be destroyed by a bunch of frickin' morons in Washington, D.C. Or the corporations that control them. We must band together and stand strong for the future of America because we the people have the power for we are America.